Welcome back to another episode of Math Skills and Performance. This time, we'll take a look at how to improve Chang and App Startup. There are many ways to improve performance based on what type of problem you may have found while inspecting. In this video, we're focusing on one particular way to improve performance, regardless of a problem you may have found during inspection, using baseline profiles. We've seen huge app startup and runtime improvements with many apps. For example, Google Maps for Android improved the cold startup time by 30% after introducing baseline profiles. This resulted in a positive shift in business metrics as well. Searches increased by over 2% as a result of that. In the Google Play app, baseline profiles were introduced as well. This is especially interesting because the Google Play app uses Jetpack Compose. Compose is distributed as a library instead of being part of the Android platform. This allows supporting older Android versions and updating it frequently, but it imposes a cost. Libraries need to be loaded when the app launches and need to be interpreted just in time when the functionality is needed. Baseline profiles effectively eliminate this cost, which in the case of the Google Play app resulted in the improvements of cold startup by 40%. So what are baseline profiles actually? Baseline profiles are a list of classes and methods that are ahead of time compiled at app installation on your device. This lets applications optimize startup, reduce jing, and improve performance for end users. You can generate a baseline profile for your application, or if you're a library developer, you can generate and distribute the rules with your library, providing performance improvements to all its clients. For example, Jetpack Compose does just that, to minimize the impact of being an unbundled UI toolkit. When generating the baseline profiles, you should cover the most important user journeys in your app and we recommend using the Jetpack Microbenchmark library to generate it for you. We've introduced the library in the previous episode on inspecting performance, and we will build on what we did there. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, we encourage you to do so now. OK, let's get back to the Now in Android sample app and generate a baseline profile. First, when generating a profile, your app should not be obfuscated. We recommend creating a separate ProGuard rule, which contains don't obfuscate, just for the build type that generates the profile. Now, let's create an instrumentation test class that will take care of generating the profile. We need to annotate this class with the run with to be a proper instrumentation test. This time, we'll use a different rule from the macro benchmark library, the baseline profile rule. Now we'll write a test method, let's call it generate, use the rule and call collect baseline profile method. This method requires two parameters. First, the package name of the app to generate a profile for, and then the Lambda parameter in which you write interactions with your app similar to benchmarks. The collect baseline profile method will run the defined interactions several times, during which it will collect the executed methods. This will be saved into a text file on the device and copied onto your hosting machine. Let's start with the most basic baseline profile, App Startup. For that, you can use the start activity and wait helper function that will start your default activity and wait until the first frame is drawn. At this time, you will already see benefits of a startup improvements. You can extend it more by waiting for the fully drawn state of your app. We will use the device.wait methods to wait until the text what are you interested in is shown on screen, because that's when users can start interacting with our app. To create an even more advanced baseline profile, you can cover other most important user journeys. In our case, let's include scrolling the content feed. First, we need to select some authors or topics as a source of our feed. We can do it with the device.findObject function and pass by resource selector. This selector needs to match a modifier test tag in the app.
Then we can find our feed list and scroll it down with the fling or other gesture. Now our generator class is ready to run. Because baseline profiles are generated in a system folder that is not accessible by default without root access, generators require a rooted device to be run on. This can either be a physical device if you have one, or even an Android emulator, because we're not measuring performance but indexing classes and method calls. One way you could run it is manually starting the emulator, switching the, to root mode with adb root command, and running the tests as any instrumentation test. But this requires several manual steps. Instead, let me introduce you to a new Android Gradle plugin feature, Gradle Managed Devices. With Gradle Managed Devices, you can configure an emulator in your build script. This emulator configuration can be checked into version control and easily be shared across development environments. Gradle enables you to run instrumentation tests without the need to manually handle the emulator they run on, making builds even more reproducible. When you run tests, Gradle will automatically take care of downloading the emulator image if needed and starting it up. Then it will run the tests you specify and copy the results into your host machine. Afterwards, it will tear down the emulator, clearing the device state to be ready for next use. Let's set up a Gradle managed device now. All you need to do is open your build.gradle.kts file and within the test options configuration block, add manage devices, devices, and create your definition of an emulator. So in our case, let's name it Pixel2 API31. We need to use the Manage Virtual Device class here and specify the details. So the device is Pixel2 running API level 31. You can have either an iOS P emulator, which has root access and doesn't come with Google Play, or one that comes with Google Play but can't be rooted. We pick iOS P because we need root access for the baseline profile generator. After a Gradle sync, we can run the generator. You can run the tests with a Gradle command either from the terminal or from the Gradle pane in Android Studio. The task consists of benchmark as the module name we want to run the tests from, Pixel2 API 31, which is the device name we've defined earlier, benchmark, that is the build type we use. If you use build flavors in your benchmarks, you need to specify it here and we finish with Android test. If we'd hit enter now, Gradle would run all the tests from the benchmark module, but we only want to run the baseline profile generator as benchmarks need to run on a physical device. For that, we can filter generator to be run only. We can use Android.test instrumentation runner arguments with a custom parameter from the library which is androidx.benchmark.enabled rules with the value baseline profile. And now we can run the Gradle task. Once the generator is done, we need to add the profile to the app. You can find the file in the benchmark modules build folder. From here, you need to copy the file and paste it into the source slash main folder next to the Android manifest and rename it to baseline prof txt. Now you need to add the profile installer dependency to your app. This library allows picking up the compiled baseline profile locally for benchmarking, but also it enables the benefits of baseline profiles on older Android platform versions and even on devices where Google Play services are not available. At this point, we have correctly applied a baseline profile. From now on, when you build your production application, it will automatically pick the generated file, include it in your app and speed up the defined journeys. Your users will see the improved experience immediately after installing the new version of your app. We created a baseline profile for our app, 
Now let's verify that there are performance improvements thanks to this. We can measure the effectiveness of baseline profiles with the same library with Jetpack Macro Benchmark. You can do it by adding another parameter to the measure repeated function, namely compilation mode. The default value of this parameter tries to apply an existing baseline profile that may come from a library you use. If it doesn't find any, it will just ignore it and continue benchmarking. You can completely disable precompilation and baseline profiles by passing compilation mode.none. Partial uses the information from baseline profile and precompiles those parts of your app. This is similar to a regular app installation on newer devices. The third option is to use compilation mode.full, which precompiles the whole app into machine code. Be aware that on Android 6 and 5, the full compilation is the only option because all apps are fully precompiled on those systems. In the previous episode, we wrote a benchmark that measures app startup. Now let's tweak this benchmark and add the compilation mode parameter to compare the difference when your app is not using the baseline profile and when it is. Now we can run those tests, this time on a physical device, because we're running the benchmarks and measuring performance. Once we have the results, we can compare the performance gains of using baseline profiles for each metric we have in our app. We can see that results on the physical device we're using clearly show much better startup performance with the baseline profiles. Similarly, we can tweak the feed scroll benchmark. We'll add the compilation mode parameter and write two different tests. After the tests finish successfully, we can see that the frames per second using baseline profiles are better, so users should see smoother scrolling experience. By generating and applying baseline profile, we moved work from the resource-limited Android device onto a development machine. This way, every user saves battery, computing cycles, and gets a better experience. And that's a wrap for improving performance with baseline profiles. I hope you'll see big improvements as we do. If you want to try it at your own pace, we have a code lab you can follow. Otherwise, check our documentation for more information and check our GitHub samples, a collection of all samples on performance. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button to get more information in the future. Also, let us know in the comments how large a performance improvement you achieved. In the next episode, Ben will go over the third and final pillar, how to monitor the performance. See you there!